Good morning. This is Keller Land on the Go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your weekend. We also have your boredom busters coming up. But first, our top story. A Milwaukee man is accused of kidnapping a woman and two children in Nashville, Tennessee, and bringing them to Keystone, South Dakota. Authorities originally arrested Curtis Deshaun Daniels in 2022. The case started out in state court, but because the crimes involve multiple states, it's now being handled in federal court. The indictment was updated on Friday. In addition to kidnapping, Daniels faces federal gun charges. A benefit play takes place later today in the Black Hills in honor of a deputy, Katie Lice Leasing, who was killed in the line of duty. The deputy Leasing was serving the Keystone and Hill City with the Pennington County Sheriff's Office before she moved to Wisconsin. Tonight's benefit is being held at the Keystone Fire Station from 5 to 8 Mountain Time. There will be a potluck, silent auction and bingo. Organizers say if you can't make it to the benefit, you can donate to help her family. A Kansas City murder suspect arrested in Sioux Falls will soon be heading home to face charges. Lakivas Sloan appeared in front of a Minnehaha County judge on Friday and waived extradition. Authorities arrested Sloan and a 17-year-old on Tuesday night after getting off a Greyhound bus in Sioux Falls. Authorities in Kansas say they shot at a home and one of the bullets hit and killed a little boy. Investigators say they may have been targeting one of the victim's family members. Detectives are still looking for a third suspect in that case. The Nebraska legislature on Friday approved a 12-week abortion ban and restrictions on gender-affirming care for children in a move so contentious that lawmakers on both sides have said they may be unable to work together in the future. The mood in the Nebraska capital has been volatile since lawmakers on Tuesday, by a single vote, tied the two restrictions together. Republicans wrangled just enough votes to end a filibuster and pass the bill, which the governor says he will sign. Friday's debate was briefly stopped when protesters in the chamber balcony stood and yelled obscenities at conservative lawmakers. Security arrested at least one person and cleared the balconies. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz has signed a bill Friday that sets two major gun control measures into law. The bill, which passed both the state Senate and House this week, creates a red flag law allowing family members, roommates and law enforcement to ask a court to suspend someone's access to guns if a judge determines they're a danger of harming themselves or others. The bill also expands background checks to private gun transfers. Let's take a first look at the forecast now with meteorologist Adam Rutt in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. It is a mainly quiet start to the day out there. A little on the cool side in a few locations, but we'll rebound nicely through the afternoon. We'll start in Falls Park on this Saturday morning. 40 at the airport. Not much of a breeze to speak of, so a very nice start to your day. But again, a little on the cool side. You might want a light coat to start the day, but by the time we reach lunch, you're not going to need it. Meanwhile, a little bit to the North and west will go to Lake Madison, 39 with a north wind at three miles per hour. And a couple of areas get as cool as the mid 30s this morning. In fact, we're still there in Brookings and Pier, both at 35, 37, Aberdeen and Watertown, 39 here on the Yankton, along with Worthington, 42, Marshall and Spencer, 44, Mulbridge, 40, Rapid City, 40 in Custer, and 46 for Spearfish. We're not going to have a whole lot of anything to go on today. Satellite and radar are both working. We just have high pressure that's giving us a whole lot of nothing today. But there are going to be a few other things to keep an eye on. We'll talk about that coming up. All right. Thank you very much, Adam. Well, like an iconic part of Kelloland's history is returned to our station. One of Captain Eleven's uniforms is on display in the Kello lobby as part of our 70th anniversary celebration. It's on loan from the South Dakota State Historical Society. The jumpsuit will be at Kello for about a year. This weekend is your last chance to attend the Spring Parade of Homes. It features 62 homes by 39 different builders. Among those is Megan Niemeyer, who is one of the few female contractors in the Sioux Falls area. When I was young, I never thought that I would take over my dad's company. I was a girl. I didn't do the construction, things like that. Um, and to see how things have changed, and I, I'm doing it. I'm doing it all. And... The parade hours are from 1 to 5 p.m. today and Sunday. The homes are located in Sioux Falls, Brandon, Harrisburg, T, Hartford, and Madison. An Armed Forces Day program in Sioux Falls includes music by the Sioux Falls Municipal Band, keynote speaker Brigadier General Deborah Bartunek of the South Dakota National Guard, plus an oath of enlistment ceremony. 
The pro program begins at 10.30 this morning at the South Dakota Military Heritage Alliance. The Tulip Festival in Orange City, Iowa includes an antique tractor show starting at 9, carnival rides at 10, a petting zoo at 11, and Vol Volks marches at 1 and 6 p.m., plus a performance of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat at 8 p.m. The North Central Chapter of the National Cartoonist Society is celebrating the life of Chris Brown. The longtime cartoonist behind Hagar the Horrible died earlier this year at the age of 70. His celebration will be held at Wildwater West beginning at 1 o'clock. You'll be able to meet professional cartoonists and get autographed copies of their drawings. Carl's TV, Audio, Appliance and Furniture is hosting a grilling expo at all Carl's locations. Enjoy live demonstrations and exclusive deals from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And enjoy late model stock car racing at I-90 Speedway in Hartford. Gates open at 5, hot laps are at 6.30 with the races starting at 7. Tickets are $20 for adults, $10 for students, and free for ages 12 and under. Adam? Well, like I said, we're not going to have a whole lot of anything going on today with high pressure very much in control, even as we zoom out a little bit more. At most, we have a bit of cloud cover towards Cheyenne and then rain toward the upper peninsula of Michigan right along the U.S.-Canada border near Sault Ste. Marie. But again, that's going to be just about all she wrote, not just for today, but really for the entirety of the weekend. The one thing we will need to keep an eye on, though, while we stay dry is going to be the smoke in the atmosphere that's going to thicken up again as we go into Sunday. So keep that in mind if you do have any outdoor plans. Even today, we'll have that filtered sunshine in place, especially the further west you go. So if you are uh, susceptible to respiratory problems, you will want to keep this in mind. Monday, we may see a few isolated showers here and there, but uh, we do start to bring in a daily chance for some pop-up showers, especially in western Kelowland, beginning later Tuesday into Tuesday night. And then you'll notice we repeat the process Wednesday into Thursday, all the while gradually increasing rain chances in central and eastern Kelowland as we head through late Thursday and into Friday as well. So again, if you have any outdoor plans, you will want to keep that in mind. Odds for above average temperatures are favored, though, as we head beyond Memorial Day and toward the end of the month. So we are certainly going to be feeling like we're hitting the unofficial start to summer in just a little over a week. Highs today, though, pretty seasonable. Low to mid 70s East River, mid to upper 70s out west, maybe a few low 80s out there. And again, we are going to be talking about filtered sunshine, especially the further west you go. Overnight low in the 40s East River, not as cool as last night, but still pretty comfortable. 40s and low 50s, though, further to the west. Here is your seven day forecast. We're going to be talking about a mainly dry start to the work week, not to mention warm too. After today, it's 80 or better. But as we hit Thursday, we have a few scattered showers to watch and then a better chance for showers and thunderstorms coming along as we head toward the end of the week. Same rules apply in Aberdeen 70s today, 80 or better Sunday going into next week. We'll also bring in that chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms as we head toward the end of next week. Then as we head toward Pier, we'll add Wednesday for a couple of showers and thunderstorms. Better chances, though, a Thursday into Friday as we stay pretty warm from start to finish. And last but not least, we'll head over to Rapid City with temperatures starting in the upper 70s, mainly sunny beyond. Again, that haze we're going to have to deal with. And then we'll also have a chance for showers and thunderstorms beginning Tuesday day going through the end of the week. Have a great day, everybody. For more on your local news and sports, you can always head on over to Kelloland.com.